to get this story right, you know, and and to be believable and and to pay tribute to the men who fought and died in that war, I needed to read all the first hand accounts I could. I spent a lot of time kind of online and, and actually reading books that people who had accessed your collection as well. So it, it was very circular. Everything came back to the Imperial War Museum. Um, even a lot of the films and documentaries I wrote, uh, I read came back to the Imperial War Museum, like They Shall Not Grow Old and everything as well, which you guys did. Thank you very much for that. Um, so yeah, I spent, I spent a huge amount of time in your reading rooms, <laughs> um, leafing through the diaries a lot online. I, I, and actually just going through your collection, your, your First World War exhibits is, is massively moving. So the Imperial War Museum collection played a huge role in this. It was absolutely vital to me. When you when you read those first hand accounts, some of them are 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 very just this happened, this happened, this happened, but then every so often you find a poet. Do you know what I mean? You find someone who is just um, a connection to you in a way that, that is not familial or, or, or necessarily about something, but someone from Glasgow, someone like someone with the same birthday as you, and it brings it home in, in a really powerful way. The the fact that everything's there at your fingertips. Um, it's so useful. There, there, yeah, there was there was a lot of surprising stuff. I think. I think the most surprising thing throughout my research was the triumph of the human spirit. You think when you think about the war, how how did for four years ten million men murder each other and sink into mud and no one go mad or scream stop? And when you read the first hand accounts, you realise they didn't do it for king and country. They did it for the men next to them. They did it for their wives and their their daughters and their sons at home. They did it for their family. There are a few things more important than understanding your history. The only way that we can move forward as a civilization is to understand the huge, colossal mistakes we made. And World War I was a human catastrophe. It was a flood of unbelievable proportions. If you go to northern France and you drive down a mile of road, you will pass four cemeteries filled with young men who died for inches. To understand that, to remember that as a civilization and to know that war shouldn't even be the last resort, it shouldn't be a resort that is despicable, <laughs> that we as a people should never, ever partake in it, is so important. The fact that we are, it's now past it of living memory, there are no, there are no survivors of the war left because we're 100 years later, um, it's now more important than ever. It's, it's, it's no longer the veterans' burden to tell their story, it's our burden to go and learn that story, to understand that story. You know, 1917, it was, well, the, the First World War was men fighting for a free and united Europe and a united Europe is in threat again. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? At, at any point, our world can fall back into the catastrophe of war. Go and read about what these men lived through. Politicians, everyone, you know, kids from age three and up should be known about this so that we, we understand that this is stupid. <laughs> we shouldn't do it. There's, 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 it's not an accident that 1917 is a story about two men carrying a message to stop a battle. That was very much designed by Sam and I and by everyone involved. It's not pro-war. It's not about kind of like, hey, fight and solves differences. <laughs>